everyone, welcome to Miss Wetton Science Revision. Today I'm going to show you how you can explain why one element is more reactive than another in a group and compare the reactivity of two different elements. So this question is commonly asked about group 1 and group 7. We'll start with group 1. A question something like this, explain in terms of electrons why potassium reacts more violently than sodium. It's worth three marks. If you look at our sodium atom, it's got one electron in its outer shell because it's in group 1. And if we look at our potassium atom, it also has one electron in its outer shell because it's in group 1. Now both of these elements want to lose that electron in order for them to react. But we can see that potassium has got more electron shells in total because it's got more electrons. Now there's an attraction between the positive nucleus and that negative electron on the outer shell that they're trying to lose. And that's holding it in place. Now on potassium, the outer shell is further away from the positive nucleus. So the electron it's trying to lose is further away from that positive nucleus. There's also these extra shells in the middle, in between the nucleus and the outer shell, that kind of interfere with the attraction between them. And we call this shielding. So more electron shells in between them means there's more shielding. The fact that there's more shielding and that the electron is further away means the attraction between the nucleus and that electron is weaker and that means makes it easier to lose that electron. So it's easier to lose the electron, potassium is going to be more reactive. So that's group one, let's have a look at group seven. For example, explaining why chlorine is more reactive than iodine. So this is two group seven elements. Now group seven elements have got seven electrons in their outer shell. They don't want to lose any, they just want to gain an extra one to get a full outer shell. I'm not going to show you the structure of iodine because the way we draw our atoms, where it's two, in this, uh, two electrons in the centre shell, then eight, then eight, doesn't work for iodine. But we can tell from our periodic table that chlorine has 17 electrons, and that's the small number there. That's because it has 17 protons, so that means it also has 17 electrons. Whereas iodine's got 53 protons, so 53 electrons. If it's got that many more electrons than chlorine, it's going to have more shells to put them in. So chlorine has fewer electron shells than iodine. Why is that important? Well, again, there's going to be an attraction between the positive nucleus and the negative electron you're trying to pull into the outer shell. The outer shell in chlorine is closer to the nucleus. There's also less electron shells in between the, uh, the outer shell and the nucleus. So the fact that it's there's less shielding and that the, the nucleus is closer to the outer shell electron means the attraction is going to be stronger so that it will be easier to gain an electron. That makes chlorine more reactive. Now we'll have a look at two, uh, group two elements. Explain why magnesium is more reactive than beryllium. So magnesium and beryllium are both in group two. So they've both got two electrons in their outer shell. Have a go at pausing the video and see if you can figure out why magnesium would be more reactive. So if you look at magnesium, it's a bigger atom, it's got more shells of electrons. That means there's a bigger distance between the nucleus and the outer shell electrons that it's trying to lose. Remember, it's trying to lose two this time. So the outer shell electrons are further away from the nucleus. You've also got that extra shield in because there are more shells in between the nucleus and the outer electrons. Both of those things mean that the attraction between the nucleus and the outer shell electrons is going to be weaker. And that means it's going to be easier to lose those electrons, which makes magnesium more reactive. We'll go back to group seven now. We're going to think about why fluorine is more reactive than chlorine. So both group seven, why would fluorine be more reactive than chlorine? These elements are both in group seven, so they both want to lose, sorry, they both want to gain an electron to get a full outer shell of eight. Pause the video, see if you can figure out why fluorine is more reactive. So looking at these two atoms, fluorine is a lot smaller because it's got fewer electron shells. That means that the outer shell, where it's trying to pull that electron into, is going to be closer to that positive nucleus. There's less shielding in fluorine because there are less shells in between the nucleus and the outer shell. 
both of those things mean the attraction between the nucleus and the outer shell or the electron you're trying to pull in is going to be stronger in fluorine so it will be easier to gain an electron. Now we'll just have a think about comparing two elements that are in different groups. For example, lithium. Why is lithium more reactive than beryllium? Well, if we think about the structure of lithium, it's in group one, so it's got one electron in its outer shell, whereas beryllium is in group two, so it's got two in its outer shell. So whereas lithium only needs to lose one electron to gain a full outer shell, it's nearly there, beryllium needs to lose two, and that is going to be more difficult. So lithium is more reactive because it's easier to just lose one electron than it is to lose two electrons. This would also work for comparing group six and seven. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know if there are any uh, topics you want me to cover in the comments below, and I'll try and cover them in the next videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time.